Hi, in this video we're going to start talking about some options basics, kind of an introduction to options. So I want to start with a call option. Call option gives the option holder the right, but not the obligation, to buy the underlying asset. And the underlying asset here is typically going to be 100 shares of stock because we're often looking at stock options. So one contract, one option contract, translates to the ability to buy 100 shares of stock. You can't buy an option contract to buy one share of stock. They trade in 100 share increments. So and a call option gives the option holder the right, but not the obligation, to buy 100 shares of the underlying stock for a pre-specified price, which is known as the strike price or exercise price, at or within a specified time is known as the expiration date. A put option is just the opposite. A put option gives the option holder the right but not the obligation to sell the underlying stock, again 100 shares of that underlying stock, for a pre-specified price, again strike price or exercise price, at or within a specified time. Now one of the things that I see students struggle with as they start getting familiar with options is the terminology terminology for options is very different than stocks so you have to get comfortable with that so you're not trying to think what's a call what's a put instead when you hear the term call you know immediately what it is when you hear the term put you know immediately what it is so think a call gives you the right to buy the underlying stock a put gives you the right to sell the underlying stock also strike price and exercise price they're the same term are different terms, but they mean the same thing. What price do we pay when we buy the underlying stock, or what price do we get when we sell the underlying stock? So getting comfortable with the terminology is a key part to options. Another important thing to stress on options is that options are the right, but not the obligation to do something. So you have the ability to buy 100 shares of stock if you choose, but if it's not in your advantage to do so, you don't have to exercise that option. You can walk away. So an option is never going to have a negative value. It's always going to be zero or some positive value. And that's an important distinction. And one of the things that makes options attractive is that you don't have to worry about how far the stock price drops for a call or how high the stock price goes for a put your loss is going to be limited because you don't have to exercise the option. Now I should note one of the things that we'll get into a little bit later is the difference between buying a call option and writing a call option or buying a put option and writing a put option. If you buy the option, if you own it, then you have the right but not the obligation to exercise it. If you wrote that option, then you are obligated to follow through if the option holder exercises it. So if I buy a call option, it's my choice whether to use it or not. If I write a call option, whoever owns that option has the choice to use it or not. And if they do choose to, I have to follow through and sell them the shares for that fixed price on the expiration date if they choose to exercise. Now, traditional stock options expire on the third Friday of the expiration month. Those are referred to as monthly options. And most companies now have weekly options. So instead of waiting for the third Friday of the month, I can choose an option that's gonna expire this Friday. Or I can choose an option that's gonna expire next Friday. Or I can choose an option that's gonna expire three Fridays from now. So I can choose options out for the next several weeks before I get locked into the monthly option time frame again. Now, as we go through videos in this class, I am going to typically assume monthly options. And if you're doing assignments in this class, assume monthly options. So focus on monthly, but recognize that if you're an options traders, options do expire every Friday. There are weekly options out there and it just makes it easier for us to focus on monthly options. Also, assume 100 options or 100 shares per option contract as that's the standard. Now, another distinction is the idea of American options versus European options. 
And when you hear this, you tend to think that it has to do with geography. It doesn't. Instead, it has to do with the expiration and how they're treated on expiration. With European options, you can only exercise those at expiration. You cannot exercise early. With American options, you can exercise early. A lot of index options are set up as European options. A lot of individual stock options are set up as American options. And you don't get to choose which option you want. Instead, the contracts are standardized. So if you want to trade an option, you use whatever that contract standardization is. The next thing we want to get into is a little bit of valuation. And again, here's where terminology can get a little confusing. So the sooner you get comfortable with this terminology, the better. Value of an option can be separated into two components. An intrinsic value, kind of what the option would be worth if it expired right now, and a speculative premium. How much extra are we paying for the potential of that option? So let me walk through a little bit of an example of intrinsic value and speculative premium. And before that, I want to also introduce there are a couple of terms in the money versus out of the money that we're going to talk about. So let's jump over to another tab that I've got here that looks at stock price example. So let's assume we've got a stock price that's currently $88 per share. Today's date is January 8th. So now let's look at a couple of options. We start with a February 80 call option. So February is the expiration date. Now normally they would have the actual date included there. 80 is the strike price, our exercise price. So that's telling me since it's a call option, I have the ability to buy the underlying stock for $80 per share if I choose to. That call option is trading for $10.40. Now this option would be considered in the money as it would give the owner the ability to buy the $88 stock for $80. So in other words, if it expired right now, would you want to pay $80 for something that's worth $88 and you could turn around and sell for $88? The answer is yes, because even if you don't want the underlying stock, you pay $80 for it now and you turn around and sell it for $88 and you make $8 in profit. So this is considered in the money. It has an intrinsic value of $8. Now remember the formula for intrinsic value is the maximum of the price minus the strike price. So here we have the price, $88, minus the strike price or exercise price of $80 are zero. Since 88 minus 80 is positive, $8, that is greater than zero. So the intrinsic value is $8. Speculative premium is what's left over. So the option itself was trading for $10.40. $8 of that is intrinsic value, so the rest is speculative premium. So the $10.40 minus the $8 intrinsic value gives us the speculative premium. Now sometimes this is referred to as just premium or time value, but I tend to refer to it as speculative premium. Now let's look at a put option. A February 80 put option is trading for 60 cents. This gives us the right, but not the obligation, to sell this $88 stock for $80. Now again, that's currently out of the money. If I could sell something for $88, I don't want to sell it for $80. That would be giving away $8. So right now, if it expired, right at this moment, I would choose not to exercise the option. I would let it expire worthless. However, doesn't expire until February, third Friday in February, so I've still got time for that stock price to drop. It's possible it could drop to $70. It's possible it could drop to $60. So I'm willing to pay something for that option, just not a whole lot because it's already trading for $88 per share. So this option is out of the money. Right now it has no intrinsic value. There's no value to it. We can calculate the intrinsic value. Now we reverse this for a put because it's the ability to sell. So we're selling for the exercise price. What's the difference between that and the current price? R0, because remember, we're not obligated to exercise the option. 
So we take the maximum of $80 minus the 88 or zero. That's a negative $8 or zero, so the maximum is zero. Zero intrinsic value. But the option is still worth 60 cents, so that's their speculative premium. The option price minus the intrinsic value gives us the speculative premium. Note that if the option has a positive intrinsic value, it's in the money. And if it has an intrinsic value of zero, it's out of the money. Except in very rare situations, such as an option that is very deep in the money or stocks with dividends upcoming shortly before expiration, the speculative premium should always be positive. And that's generally referring to American options here because that's the more standard situation that you're gonna encounter because you have the ability to exercise early if you want to. So if the speculative premium was negative, if you're losing money by holding the option, you would choose not to do that and you would exercise early. However, this is rarely the case. So in most cases, again, the exceptions being a stock that's very deep in the money, maybe there's just not enough demand for it, or the transaction costs are high enough that nobody wants to buy it at that point because they don't expect to make any more profit off of the option versus the actual stock, or there's dividend situations. And I'll talk a little bit more about dividends in another video but dividends change stock prices and therefore if there's a dividend being paid shortly before expiration there might be a situation where you want to exercise early very very rarely are you going to want to exercise early every once in a while that will come up and so that gives a quick overview of options thank you